This is Latvia, one of the fastest location EA Sports WRC has its in Arsenal, if not the fastest. Quick note before we start, I received a few questions about whether the setups from the last two stages, Chile and Poland, work for the 2023 car or if older setups can be used for the 2024 car. The answer is yes. The only technical differences between these cars are in the spring rate and ARB values. Since I always show you how many clicks I adjust each slider, you can apply the same adjustments even if the values do not match. Now let's move on to Latvia. Since the average track speed in Latvia is quite high, the alignment looks like this. A little bit of toe out for the front wheels to help with cornering and a little more toe in for the rear wheels to increase stability. The camber values are more on the higher side on faster tracks, because when blasting with over 150 km per hour around those long turns, the tires experience high deformations. To combat this and stay planted on the road, set the front camber to minus 1.75 and the rear camber to minus 1.25 degrees. For the differentials, the job is simple. More turns equals less lock, fewer turns equals more lock. But of course, this applies only to the driving lock. For the braking lock and preload, still a smaller lock value is recommended to help take the turn smoothly and reduce understeer. Now in the damping tab, I've left the slow bump at the default value because road conditions are pretty different in Latvia. Some tracks are bumpier, while others like 7, 8, 9 and 10, I'm not gonna try and pronounce this, are smoother. So for a good all around setting, leaving the value at 0 is the best way to go. Since there are many jumps in Latvia and some are quite violent, I've set the fast bump to plus 3 on the stiffer side and lower the bump division, so any shock above 0.52 meters per second will be absorbed by the fast bump. As for the rebound, just one click on the softer side, because you will be going up and down a lot on these tracks. So the wheels need to stay in contact with the road as much as possible, while also not sacrificing stability. Hey, did you know that Nox has started memberships on his channel? Oh wow, so what? I mean, it has an offer like never seen before. Mm -hmm. No, really, you can ask for customized tuning setups. Wait, what? Yeah, if you sign up as chief engineer, you can tell him the location and the car you're struggling with and he will make you a tuning setup just for you and help you with any other adjustments. No way! Plus, you will get early access to WRC1 and WRC2 setups before they make it to YouTube and a growing collection of tuning setups for various cars in various locations. But this is also included for the engineer level, right? Yes, you're right. So, what what you waiting for? In the braking tab, if you watch the Poland setup guide from last week, you'll notice some similarities. Medium high braking force, because coming to a stop from 200 km per hour is no easy job, and 65% brake bias, because 68 or 69 will easily overload the front tires, making them lock and you're gonna start sliding. As for the handbrake, a little over 2000 Nm of force will be enough to easily lock those rear wheels when taking a square turn. The gearbox is set so you can go fast. This means that I've only shortened the file and drive just 10 clicks from the default value. Latvia is fast, no doubt, but it doesn't have long straights where you can easily get to the rev limiter in the fifth gear, so there is no need for a very long ratio. While all the other gears have been set so it perfectly fits these crazy tracks. In the spring step, I've tried to keep the right height as low as possible, but still, I couldn't go lower than 50 mm because as said earlier, some tracks are bumpy and with lower ground clearance, I kept on hitting the car's underbody and lose control. To be able to get over those bumps with ease, I softened the springs down to 14 newtons per millimeter. The entire roll bars are set relatively stiff this time, because Latvia is full of fast turns and combined with its ride height, I wanted to keep the body roll as minimal as possible while also not messing with the bump absorption. Don't forget to try all the other Rally 1 setups from my collection or check out this in-depth guide where I explain the function of each slider. Now I hope that you'll enjoy Latvia even more and if so, leave a like, a comment below, subscribe to my channel and buy me a coffee. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track, bye bye!